there, Erin at Morehouse Farm here with today's knitting tip, which is how to set the markers after you cast on for the grown together mittens. And several of you have emailed me saying, what on earth do these mean? These are really complicated. And they are, but once you understand the code, I think you'll find that they make a whole lot of sense. So let me give you an overview of what the designer is trying to accomplish here with all these markers and where they'll be positioned. And I think that'll give you what you need to get started on it. All right, so first, what are you gonna need for supplies? Here, I've got my markers already set up. Yes, I've got some household items in addition to some real stitch markers, but bear with me because here's what I've got. I've got four pairs of stitch markers, which are my paper clips. And the reason that I've got four pairs is because these guys are gonna mark the beginning and end of my cuffs. And if you think about it here, we're gonna start, knit some cuffs, Work the thumb, back around the thumb, cuff on the other side, that's two, cuff on the other mitten on the other side, that's three, and then around the thumb and back to the cuff on this side, that's four. So here in my demonstration, I've marked we begin and we end the cuff. You wanna know that that is a separate section because you're working in garter stitch here and everything else is in stockinette. So for me, I'm gonna use a big paper clip to start and a small paper clip to remind me to stop. Right, that's all there is to those. It's just the positioning to remind you that you're knitting in garter stitch there. So that takes care of these guys. Get them out of the way. All right, I've got a kitty here because that'll be my beginning of the round marker, which is what this paper clip or this uh, bobby pin is serving at in the meantime. And you can see, yes, I use a lot of practical items to help me with my knitting. This is holding my tail yarn, and it's not only doing that, but it's marking that beginning of the round at the same time. And then I've got two more, and these spinning wheels are going to be my markers for the end of the first needle and the end of the second needle, which are marked with my periwinkle yarn right here. And all that is telling me is that I'm either knitting on this side or I'm knitting on the back side. I'm doing the same thing, but my beginning of round is only gonna show up on one side as we're knitting in a circle, right? So across this side, up the back, and then across the front again to the beginning. So I have a little code in these myself that helps me remember blue is first prize at a sheep show, red is second prize, so that'll be the end of needle one, that'll be the end of needle two, and that's how I'm gonna use those stitch markers. So it seems super complicated, but I think it's because the designer is trying to put so much information in those abbreviations. One C means first cuff on first side of first needle, when I think you can make do with start and stop. All right, so there's maybe more information than we need there, but I find that super helpful because that's how I sorted out what is she telling us in this super secret code. And I think this pattern is brilliant, so I'm really excited that we're knitting with it. All right, so let's get these markers situated on the needles. And the reason that she recommends you set them as you go is because in the first row, you are gonna be purling some. All right, let me get these out of the way. So you might want to do one of two things. If it's a lot to handle all at once, holding this little awkward new cast on, you can work along and place the markers as you go, or you may want to just clip it like I have and then position the markers so that you can work to them. And because I have paper clips, which is maybe the um, MacGyver version of a locking stitch marker, I don't have to knit to these to place them. So that'll work pretty well. The kitty, on the other hand, I do need to make sure I place wherever it is. And that's where I'm gonna have to be careful with that. So let me start here. And I need to unclip my needles in order for this to get started. You might also wanna use a rubber band. That would certainly work if you wanna just hold on to them while you work. And I need to do five more, so we'll remember our Turkish cast on. One, two, three, four, five. So there, I'm good to go. I gotta make sure it comes up the front again because that bottom stitch is going to be important. Okay, so as I get started, I'm supposed to knit across, right, on the back side. So if I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna pull that back needle out and these are nice and tight, so don't worry if you can't get it out too easily, just work it. And you may need to push on the back side just so you can grab it, okay? And that seems awkward, I know, but that's gonna be super helpful because then they're not gonna have a whole lot of extra slack later on. 
and then we're gonna start to knit. Again, in the hole of the stitch, not through the back loop or the front loop, but in the hole. And this first one needs to wrap around itself. I know that's a super awkward concept, but once it catches, you're good to go. And you can keep working over to where we need to set the stitch marker. Now it's 20 something stitches in, depending on which side, size whoops, you're going for. And see how easy that is to repair if you just accidentally knock it off the needle? I love that about this cast on. All right, so we're gonna work over to wherever that may be. Or if I just wanna pause, I might find it more helpful to count and place the markers as I'm going, or sorry, I can do them as I'm going, or it might be more helpful to just count across and place my markers so I know where the cuff is when I get to it. So I'm knitting across my 25, 29, whichever you've got, all right, and then I can place that marker, and that's super easy with a paper clip because wherever you need it to go, right, just stick it in here. Make sure you got it around the right side here, which is gonna be this needle shaft. And voila, I have now placed my marker. But I need to go across, then I am going to knit and place another marker, which is gonna be the end, and then I'm gonna go across a little bit place my beginning of the row marker and so forth, just following the pattern. So here, I'll take that out and do that. If you are ready to get going, go for it. But if you wanna see the whole thing, let's continue on. So I've got there my 25, I think. And yes, they've come off the needle a little bit, so I'm just gonna pick those back up and keep going. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, right? Then I'm gonna place my first marker, right? Or set my first marker as she uses, right? Because English is probably not her first language growing up in Finland, but she is doing a fantastic job. So there's my first marker. Okay, and then we're gonna knit 10. place the next marker, which is gonna be the end of my cuff. So that's where I'm using the small one, right? Because I'm using big for start and little for stop. Now it gets a little bit tighter here, meaning there's less stitches in between because what I'm placing next is the beginning of round marker, okay? Marking that as the center stitch set the beginning of round marker, that's what BOR means, and that's also part of why I incorporated this pattern into our knit-alongs because you're gonna run into different abbreviations from different parts of the world, and you're gonna run into different pattern styles, and they're not all going to be written out exactly as you have learned to read a pattern the first time through, and I want you to be able to take part in all of these beautiful designs that are out there. So that's why we're challenging ourselves with a different kind of pattern, and we're working through this together. So I set my beginning of the mark round marker, okay? Then I'm gonna start with my next cuff, okay? Just as you see here, I'm knitting along, right? Up this side, I've done the thumb part, now I'm doing the cuff, now I'm going across what's gonna be the steek with the beginning of the round marker, now I'm setting for the next cuff. So I need a big one here, then I'm going to continue on, and this time it says purl, so that's why it's important that you don't knit around before you set the markers because you're gonna miss up where you have pearls. And yes, I am doing combination purling because that's more comfortable for me even still, plus I find it's faster. And I noticed that my tension is a lot more even between knitting and purling than if I were to do traditional continental or the picking purling. This way works well for me. So one, two, three, Seven, eight, nine, ten. There's the end of that cuff. All right. 
right, and then I am going to knit to the end of the needle. All right, and that's where I'm gonna place my beginning, or my end of needle one, my blue one, right? First prize, first needle. And if you want to write down your little code that keeps you sane so that you know how to refer to that easily. But I found once I got those eight stitch markers for the cuffs out of the way, that was a whole lot easier to be able to maneuver things because it was just four pairs of the same thing. I just had to understand where they were placed. All right, so coming down to the end here, and again, as things get stretched out, they're getting a little bit tighter. Oh, really good tip. If you are a tight knitter, make sure you pull out a bunch of yarn from the ball as you're knitting along so that you have three or four yards at a clip out there. And that's gonna help because it's gonna reduce the tension that's coming from the ball. And I think it'll help you find you regulate your tension a whole lot better. All right, so coming up on this, get to the end here. And I'm to the end, so I'm gonna place my end of round marker. Okay. And like with all, I'm going to pull my cords so that I have all the stitches back to the shaft. And they're gonna slide down on the cord because it is pretty long. So then we're gonna turn. Okay. And make sure I get that tail out of the way. What I notice next is, this is where stitch markers always drive me nuts. So I, in full disclosure, did take them out and stopped knitting with them except the beginning of the round marker, but that's totally up to you. Look at all this hardware I got on here. And we're only halfway done. Okay, so now as I'm pulling out, and yes, this is where yarn management becomes something you gotta pay a lot of attention to, right? I did knit on this needle. My yarn is coming from the bottom needle here, so I need to pull that out. Bring this back around. And it's okay if this end and round stitch marker is on your cord, it'll catch up as you go along. So we're gonna slip one. Okay. And then we're going to start knitting with the tail, which is why it was important to have this here. Okay, and then we're gonna go all the way across for the correct number of stitches based on your size knit mittens. Look at all this jingling. I feel like I got a lot of bling here on these needles. So again, I'm gonna match up the same size stitches or same amount of stitches that I did on the other side. So, because these are gonna be the front and back of my thumb. And I'm about to where I need to be, so I'm just gonna give it a quick count. And that's where I'm gonna place that marker. So this one now is going to be the marker that tells me I am at my next cuff. So it's gonna be my start marker, okay? And then I'm going to do the cuff stitches. And you'll notice that I see some pearl bumps right here. That is meant to be because we want the garter stitch to continue all the way around. So that's why you were purling on the other side, you're knitting on this side. Need my end of round, or my end of cuff marker right there, okay? And then we're going to knit two. And that's where the instructions say, okay, you're going to slip the stitches back onto the left needle, come back here and get the ball yarn, and then we're gonna knit across. Mm -hmm. And that is gonna be a surprise for later, but it'll be worth 
having all of this yarn with us for the rest of the project. Because you guys, we're gonna steak. I'm super excited about this. All right, so I realize this video is getting quite long, but for those of you who wanna see it all the way through, I will finish it up. Hopefully you have built some confidence now that you understand the secret code and how to set these markers and decide, do you wanna work with them all the way through or do you wanna to learn to read your knitting? Because I find that a whole lot more fun than knitting with all these markers everywhere personally. But again, personal preference. So we're gonna continue on here. As I'm just sliding all those back to where we're gonna get our regular yarn. And all we're doing is positioning things for later. That's why we're moving that to the center. I'm so excited to get started with this color on another pair because it's our lily colorway. Kind of like our rusty pink in the bulky. We've got some beautiful browns and purples and pinks involved here. All right, so I may need to reposition this needle just because of the way it's curling. That's always one thing with really long circulars. Okay, so now we're gonna knit to the marker, all right, which is up here. And then we're gonna purl. So we're setting the stage for that garter stitch. So it'll be the same whenever we come around again. And again, I'm just going back and forth between different knitting styles. It doesn't matter which one you prefer. All right, so that was some throwing. Here's some picking. Is this like watching paint dry? I hope not. Just watching someone else knit. Good news is we're almost up to this marker, which is where I'm gonna change it up. And see where they get in the way, just cause there's so much going on here. Yes, I could use smaller markers, but I grabbed paper clips just to demonstrate. And we're gonna purl here. I will get rid of these myself and just read my knitting going forward. So if you are so inclined, I would love to bring you along on the reading your knitting journey so that you could give that a try as well because it is a super handy skill. Not only does it help you not have to use markers all the time and fiddle with them, but it also allows you to, when you drop stitches, put them back on your needle however you catch them and then work with them along the way because you know what they were supposed to be. Okay, so we're back to that marker. We've purled across, okay. Now we're gonna do our center stitches here, which is gonna be our steak. Boy, that is jingly, isn't it? All right, and notice that these rusty colored stitches, the orangey ones got a little bit loose, so I'm just gonna give them a tug because they were with the uh, tail yarn. Okay, so here we go with my next cuff. Put on that last stitch marker for my last of the four sections of cuff. Oops, I think I'm supposed to be purling these, aren't I? See, that's again with reading your knitting. You'll notice, oh, I'm missing out on a part of this. So, Quick change, and that's again why the markers are useful, right? They're just a reminder so that you know where you are and what you need to do next, or at least that you're changing something. Okay, last one. Situates the end here. So now I'm gonna knit all the way around to the end here, and then I'm gonna place my end of needle two. Almost there, guys. I know this is a lot of work for today, and I promise you, it gets easier from here. The beginning is always the most awkward, and I think even new knitters will say, yeah, I can knit, right? It's getting started that's the hard part. So once you are past this, you are going to be sailing. Because from here, it's 
pretty much just knitting with a little bit of purling every once in a while and some pretty fantastic increase techniques that I'm going to be really excited to share with you. So here we are coming down to the home stretch. Gives me the chance to place this end of needle marker. Okay, and again, because it's the magic loop, we're gonna pull the stitches onto the shaft, slide them back up to reposition them. And look at all this stuff I got here, including my stitch marker that just slipped off. Put that back together, and that's the only downside with paper clips. Sometimes they catch the yarn. So we'll move this back around. Noticing that my stitch came from this side, so we'll pull that one out. Get ready to knit here. And as we're knitting across, we're going to continue on because we need to get back to the beginning. Yep, that marker is definitely gonna go. I don't think I wanna hear jingling the whole time. Of course, if I was doing this on my lap instead of on a table, that would make a difference too. So here I am coming up to that cuff and I have not yet added the garter stitch on this side. Okay, so I slipped that marker. Now I need to purl here. Flip that marker once I've purled the last stitch. And here I am back to the beginning of the round. Voila, we made it. So you can see you've got the garter stitch here for the cuffs, the garter stitch here for the cuffs, knitting for the thumb, knitting for the thumb on the other end, and a little bit of stockinette in the middle, which will turn out to be your steek. So totally up to you how you wanna continue on, but I am going to remove these markers because I can see exactly where the purling starts. So I know that's something I gotta pay attention to. So if you're using locking stitch markers, you could just pull them out now. If you decided you wanted to be brave, look, I just lost the kitty right there. So one thing you can do to avoid that from happening, you know you're gonna knit the next stitch. Just do that while you hit pause and remove the rest of the stitch markers. All right, they're pretty easy to take out, or you can take them out as you work around on the next round if you wanna get rid of them. But that flock is how we cast on and set the markers for our mittens. And from here, these are gonna grow into thumbs. So we are right here at the beginning with an awfully good start to the day, and I am excited to share with you what comes next. So trust in the pattern, all of these things can be figured out, and we're gonna have one awesome pair of mittens at the end. Happy knitting, and don't forget to post your questions. That's what this group is all about, so if there's something we can clarify or show you again, let us know, and we'll be happy to do so. All right, happy knitting, everybody.